assuming that my clamp's not dead, which it is. These are always dead. Fluke, why did you not put an auto turn off timer in this? <clears throat> Every time I go to use it, I have to change the battery. I've gotten some grief over our hand tools before about the auto turn off timers. But tell you what, sure saves you from uh, what I have to do right now, changing the battery in this, in this clamp. All right, anyways, we've got input current, input voltage, input current again. We multiply these two together, you get input power, and then you add those together, you get output power. So efficiency is defined as output power divided by input power. That's it. So let's turn it on. Amplifier's turned on. We are drawing 800 milliamps or 0 0.8 amps. Maybe I can get closer. Okay, that's just the idle current. So at this moment, we've got 0 0.8 times 14. It's around 12. 12 watts in, zero watts out. Zero percent efficiency because there's no audio playing. So when there's no audio playing like this, the amplifier could be drawing up to this particular amplifier, the 404, could be drawing up to maybe six amps, seven amps, something like that even with no audio playing, if it thought that it needed to. But this one is pretty charged up. You know, the ones in my truck, they just stay fully charged up. I try to beat them up, but you know, one of them's running door speakers, one's running the center channel, one's running rears and tweeters. Like I just can't beat it up hard enough to ever get the battery level to come down, even the subwoofer amplifier, even just full tilt railing it, you just can't. There's there's pauses in between the beats, there's pauses in between the tones in the song, there's changing of tracks. I pull up to a red light, maybe I wanna be polite and turn it down for a second. Like all those little pieces of time that don't seem like much, the amplifier is replenishing the battery. All right, so I'm just gonna play a sine wave Kind of low power for a minute just to just to see what's going on here. All right, so there you can see the green and the red lights are on on the amplifier at the same time because it's kind of in between, and that circuit that's running that system is pretty prototypey right now. So we've got input power, we've got 1.5 amps times 14 volts. That's 21 watts. So 21 watts is going in, and that many watts per channel is going out. So 21 watts going in, roughly half of that going out, 50% efficient. 50% efficient right now. Mind you, the output section of this amplifier is a class D. This could be used with a class AB, no problem. Of course, the overall efficiency would be less, but you can work with either topology, it's just a power supply invention. All right, so here we are, steady state sine wave, 11 watts out. 22 watts in, 50% efficient. Imagine everybody's cool with that, pretty simple. Let's turn it up some. All right, now we're 
putting out about 29 watts. And we're taking in about 37 watts. 77% efficient. Okay, so here we are, 77% continuous sine wave. Let's turn it up some. All right, here we are. Input. Let's get precise. Got the trusty TI-89 titanium here. 13.94 volts and 5.57 amps. Seventy-seven watts of input, and whoa! Check that out. Seventy-four watts of output. Pretty crazy, right? Seventy-four watts out. Seventy-seven watts in. That is ninety-five point three percent efficient right now. You can see where this is going, right? Should we go more? Well, I've just been letting it sit here with a sine wave too this whole time. Shouldn't it run out by now? It should run out. And let's go more. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got. Uh, Input is 13.94 volts and 5.7 amps, 79 watts in, and 115 watts out. Uh-oh. <laughs> We've gone over 100% efficiency. What's going to happen? breaking the laws right I mean yes you can't just create energy out of nowhere yes this is a law that cannot really be broken so it's called a law but efficiency has no time associated with it we're talking about power in power out now if you wanted to talk about over time, that's not called power, that's called energy. Energy and energy out, that's a whole different thing. But then you got to think, what, what's the energy, you know, when the car's parked and the amp's turned off? You have to consider that too. So, you know, that's not, that's not how it works in audio. Efficiency of amplifiers has always been determined by full power output, how much power is coming in, how much power is going out. That's how it's determined always has been that way. You don't see amplifiers rated for efficiency at quarter power, at half power, at three quarters power, over five minutes. You know, there's some amplifiers, like some JLs with the regulated supplies, as they get warmer, the power rolls back. So on those, you would have to calculate all that stuff into it. All right, anyways, let's do the math here. 115. So we are at... 144% efficiency. Wowzer. All right, my meters shut off. Because they have auto timers in them because they're smart. I like this dumb clamp, right? Turn on. All right, let's. I'm going to mute it here. I want you guys to check out the uh, current as soon as it comes up. All right, all right, muted. So there you go. Amplifier is not putting out any power. Yet we're still drawing. 50, 60 watts from the car. It's going down slowly. Eventually it'll top back off, but this is the idea of current averaging. This amplifier is not capable of drawing more than six amps. Doesn't matter what you do to it. And it's just gonna average that out. So they used to say that the average uh, power of music compared to a sine wave was eighth power. This is kind of a long-standing industry rule. Um, so much so that UL 
testing and, and other types of uh, organization to test power amplifiers for like safety reasons will require you to run an eighth power sine wave and see how hot the amplifier gets to make sure it's safe to be used in a, in a home or something like this. So, um, but today modern music is like super compressed, right? The, the, the quiet parts of the music are brought up louder. Um, so the dynamic range is smaller and then the whole thing is pushed up. So that's compressed. So it's not one eighth anymore. There's also a lot of like continuous long tones on things like that in today's music. So I found in my testing that it's closer to about one fifth power, maybe even one fourth power on some really heavy like rebase stuff. But then you've got the factor of impedance rise on the speakers as well. Now this amplifier is a 404, it can put out 400 watts, but only into a fixed uh, four ohm bridge load, which I have here on it. This is hooked to a speaker load you won't be able to get 400 watts at all frequencies, right? Because the impedance is, is changing. It's going to rise up. So that works to its favor. All right. Let's just go full power. And we'll end this video. And I'll save it. And people can come watch it later. They can come cry later. Let's go more sus. There we go. 180 watts out. Got the same 75 watts or so in. So now we're at maybe 200 and something percent efficiency. Let's see, 13.94 volts times 5.46 amps. You guys believe this thing's drawing 5.4 amps right now? It's kind of crazy. Even even though I've been working with it for a while, it's still kind of crazy to see. Okay, so 75, 76 watts in and 180 watts out, that is 237% efficiency right there. All right, let's go more. Does it have more? Let's see if we can let some smoke out. Admittedly, some of the prototype circuits in there are not, they might not be so robust, but okay, 13.94 volts times 5.1 amps in. Got 71 watts coming in and almost 300 watts coming out. 422% efficiency. There it is, it's happening. I'm just letting it run. 420% efficiency, right? I mean, yeah, but, the, but, but what? Like, it can stay like this until it overheats. I mean, It's clearly nowhere near that. All right, let's shut off for a sec. Let's see what happens to the current. Maybe we sucked on the battery a little bit. It's going to sit here at 5 amps for a little while. But the level of charge in there is still like 99%. <clears throat> and the thing is, since there's a power supply after that power supply and battery, there's another power supply you can use up all of the energy within the battery. So it's not like uh, when you put capacitors on the rail, like a T like the T15KW had, or, or some other people talk about, well, you just put a bunch of caps and then they drain down. Well, the problem with that is that as they drain down, your power goes down. But in the case of this, there's another power supply after the battery. So it ramps the voltage up to where it needs to be. In this proto, it doesn't, it's not fully regulated, but if it was, then it wouldn't matter what the battery voltage was at all. This one has a regulated power supply as the intermediate power supply, so it doesn't matter what this voltage is at all from the car. We could adjust this B plus to whatever, and it's still going to perform the same. All it would do is this would be less and that would be more because it is fully regulated. It's kind of fun to see, so I'll, I'll lower the voltage and you can see the current increase. The watts will remain the same. See that? Still like 75 watts, doesn't matter what the voltage is from the car. And the voltage from the car doesn't affect the amplifier's output power either. Two really, really good things in audio. 
All right. Well, it's still charging up. Um, let's let's just take it. Let's take it to clip. It should be able to do a little over 400 watts. Let's see what the efficiency is at full tilt. Let's try 1.7 volts in, about 1.8 volts in, about 1.9. Okay, let's leave it there for a second. 13.93 volts times 4.8 amps, 66 watts in and 404 watts out. 604% efficient. And it's running, 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 running. What do you guys think? So of course with music, you know, it's doing something like this, on off, on off. And you can see the uh, the charge discharge lights. Here, let me focus in over here so you can see. So I'm going like full power, no power, full power, no power. You can see what happens. It's not really affecting the current draw. So there's no power out, 400 watts out. No power out, 400 watts out. No power out, 400 watts out. That's what we do by current averaging. Doesn't matter what the amp's doing. Uh, once the battery is down into the, you know, the, the top charge is taken off and it's down into the useful range like it is now, it's just going to drop five to six amps all the time. So uh, there we go. I'm going to end the video. We'll leave it. People can watch it and comment more. You guys can share it.